Good morning, everybody. Welcome here to Westside Fellowship Church. Uh, if you're new with us, uh, my name is Matthew. I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here. And uh, it's just so great to have uh, you join with us as we worship together, as we learn together, whether that's here in person or if you're watching online at home. Uh, welcome to each and every one of you. So good to have you uh, join with us. And I know it's kind of getting normal again, uh, although it might not be for very long of this whole actual gathering in people. As many of you know, we now have this new mask mandate again coming back in. And so thank you so much for being willing to uh, just go along with that, cooperate with that for this point. Hopefully we don't see a, a bigger resurgence and uh, don't have to get all locked down again. But that is our, our hope and our prayer. Uh, today is actually going to look a little different than normal. Uh, we're still going to do our usual uh, service that's going to last about an hour long. We're going to have some music. We're going to have a message, those kinds of regular things. However, because it's summertime, we have a lot of people away on holidays. And so what that means is a few things. First, it means that most of our worship teams are away. Now, they were good enough to do some recordings for us earlier in the week. So if you're watching online, this is going to look pretty normal. However, for those of you here in person, it's going to be up on the screen. And so we're just going to worship along with them. And then um, yesterday, I got an email mid-afternoon or so that our the person who was scheduled to speak today had come in contact with someone with COVID. And so because of that, same thing, we actually have a message from our regional director, but that's going to be up on the screen as well. So I'll introduce that when we get to it. But it is going to feel a little bit different. Some of you might be wondering, well, what was the point of me coming to church in person in the first place? Uh, you know what? We still have the incredible blessing of being able to gather with each other, of seeing each other in person, of maybe shaking someone else's hand, uh, that smiling face, although you can't tell with all the masks. But they are smiling, believe me. And um, yeah, it's just so good to still be able to gather together. So uh, I'm going to pray. Uh, just talk to God for a couple seconds, and then I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to sing together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Uh, God, we thank you for uh, the blessing of rain. Uh, it's hard to believe that here in the middle of summer, uh, how many of us are like, oh, we want sunshine, we want to be able to just go outdoors and enjoy the heat, that we have been praying for rain for so long. And God, we are incredibly grateful for the gift of rain, how it's putting up the fires, how it's making it manageable for the firefighters that are out there. And God, we continue to pray for their safety and their protection as they uh, put in long hours and put their lives on the line for each and every one of us. God, thank you for your provision. Uh, thank you that even though uh, we might not be excited about doing worship and hearing a message on video. Thank you that we have this technology, that we can still gather together, uh, even as there's a, a new mask mandate. Lord, thank you that we can still be with one another and worship you together. And so, God, we ask for your blessing on this time. Would you help to just quiet our hearts and our minds, turn our focus and our attention on you. Help us to hear from you. Help us to pour out our love for you through music. And God, would you just bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we worship together?
to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the
seated. Uh, for those of you who came in a little bit late, just want to let you know I said it at the beginning, but this morning is a little bit of an interesting morning. Uh, all of our worship teams have <laughs> gone away on holidays for the most part, and uh, yesterday I got an email saying that uh, uh, Jack, who's on our leadership team, who was supposed to be speaking, he came in contact with someone with COVID, and so he got contact and said, you got to stay home for the next however long and so today we are going to actually have a, a message from our regional director, a man named David Harita. And this message is a message that he actually recorded uh, back in May, I believe, when we were still completely locked down with COVID. And uh, as a church, we were like, ah, you know, we don't need it at this time. You know, things are going good. They're starting to open up. And then, of course, <laughs> here we are. Mask mandates are coming back. Things are starting to you know, locked down again. And so I thought it was just, you know, a, a timely message for us as a church to ask the question, should we actually be desiring to go back to normal? Now, hear me. I, I know we want to stop wearing the masks. I know we want to start being able to be more and more with each other, get back to concerts and all those kinds of things. And yeah, we do want some of that. But what David has to say this morning for us, I think is very timely for us as a church. Because so often, normal means that we become complacent. We become apathetic. Uh, and normal is often when the church doesn't do so well in carrying out the message and the mission that Jesus has given us to bring to others. And so, we're going to uh, watch this message. It's about 20 minutes long, so it's not a long one. But before we do... Uh, let's just take a, a few moments to, again, spend some time in prayer, talking to God. Uh, I know that there's a lot going on in this world right now that's probably swirling around in your mind, as it has been in mine. Uh, obviously, COVID is a big thing. The wildfires that we've been dealing with here in B.C., if you've been watching the news and seeing what's going on in Afghanistan, how uh, many of the troops have been pulled out. And uh, you may know this, you may not know this, but there are many people who are being persecuted that are now being put to death. And a large majority of those people are actually Christians. They're followers of Jesus, as the Taliban is once again taking control of that nation and saying, hey, anyone who is opposing Islam, especially their extreme form of it, will be put to death. And so let's just take a few moments to pray for some of these things that are on our hearts and minds, and then we will listen to the message from David. Heavenly Father, once again, uh, we come before you. As we just sang, we come to lay down our burdens. Lord, we know that each and every one of us has made mistakes, uh, sometimes uh, on accident and oftentimes deliberately. We've chosen to do things our own way, not to listen to you, but to indulge in our own sinful desires and to uh, do things that we know is not only good for ourselves, but hurts ourselves. It hurts others and Ultimately, it hurts our relationship with you. 
And yet, Lord, you welcome us with arms wide open. We don't have to come to you in shame. We don't have to come before you uh, groveling or begging for mercy. You offer it freely. All because of what Jesus has done for us. And so we thank you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, your compassion. Uh, We thank you for your love. God, thank you again for the rain, a a symbol of your love, how uh, you are putting out fires, you are moistening the ground, you are, uh, it might be a little bit late, but maybe providing a little bit of extra moisture for farmers uh, and ranchers. And uh, Lord, we we are so grateful for that. Uh, God, we we do pray and continue to pray for our firefighters as they uh, fight the uh, fires around us. Lord, would you protect them, lead them, guide them, give them wisdom. Uh, where they should be attacking the fire and how to do that in a safe manner. Uh, God, we also pray for our, our entire world right now as we are seeing a resurgence uh, of COVID with this Delta variant and all that's going on. And uh, God, I know there's all kinds of different viewpoints out there, uh, but I think all of us would agree that we want this to be over. We want COVID to be gone. Uh, and if it's not going to disappear, we want it to be in such a place that... Um, we can live with it, that we can get back to um, seeing each other, being together, having those concerts and those big gatherings, as well as just being in each other's homes, and even something simple as being able to go to church without a mask. Uh, Father, as we've been seeing in the news as well, with all that's going on in Afghanistan, God, we just pray that you would intervene. We don't know what that looks like, but as women, children, men are being executed, put to death, uh, God, uh, especially those who have put their faith and trust in you. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your compassion. Lord, if it is your desire that these individuals would die standing up for their faith and trust in you, would you use that as a witness to those people around them, that they would be able to see these people are different because of Jesus. And God, would you grant them mercy? Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Surround them with your protection. God, our hearts break for them. Father, as we turn our our attention to the message that you have for us from uh, David, Lord, would you open our hearts and our minds to what you want to say to us. We know that he has a single message to say, but you are with each and every one of us. You speak to our hearts. And so, God, would you help us to hear what you want to say to each and every one of us as individuals? Would you take what you say to us? And would you help us to grasp onto it, to hold on to it, and to begin to live it out in this coming week? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In recent years, I reviewed my life more than I ever have. That may be something to do with the turmoil of the past year, which has kind of focused it. So civil unrest, racial injustice, or political turmoil that seems to be shaking the roots of democracy, or most obviously the pandemic pandemonium. Or maybe, maybe it's just that in my role as regional director for Culture Pacific, I'm tired of being asked when the church world is going to return to normal. But the fact is, whether I like it or not, it is the question I have gotten asked the most for over a year, whether through phone calls or in person. In spring 2020, Harvard Business Review published an article which became the most widely read digital article in their illustrious history, where they described our collective feelings of grief and loss during the pandemic as mourning the loss of normalcy. But the truth is, I really don't like the question, when will we return to normal? In fact, the more I hear those words, the more flashbacks that I've had of a period in my life when my musical tastes were directed towards a folk rock fusion that was expressed by Canadian musician Bruce Coburn. I know, I get it, some of you have never heard of him, you're too young to have ever heard of him, nor do you care. 
So let me tell you that Bruce Colburn has won 13 Juno Awards. He has six honorary doctorates. He has received the Order of Canada, the Queen Elizabeth Medal, among many other awards. He even has his own Canadian postage stamp. And yet, I know, most of you still don't care. Maybe it will matter more when I tell you he was interviewed about his faith in Christianity Today in 2012, and he talked about how he gave his life to Jesus. Again, with most superstars, it's hard to know. Regardless, in 1981, Coburn Roos released a platinum-selling album that included a fascinating song that was entitled, The Trouble With Normal Is It Always Gets Worse. That song's been kind of wandering through my mind throughout COVID. The more I've been asked when we're going to return to normal, the more I've wondered whether Bruce Coburn was right. And should we as Christians, as local church aficionados, really want a return to normal? Or is it true to say that the trouble with normal is it always gets worse? So I invite you to think about this with me for a few minutes. Consider some of the stories of the Old Testament. In Judges, for example, if we were to dig into that, the pattern is quite simple. The Israelites would be threatened by a nation that was stronger than them, one that could probably take them over, maybe wipe them out, and God raises up a leader who is called a judge, who leads them to a spectacular and miraculous victory. You know many of those stories really well. And Israel swears to follow God, and they do so for a while, until things become normalized. And then they grow complacent. They focus on their own stuff. And to quote the repeated phrase in the book of Judges, they do evil in the sight of God again. Then the cycle recurs. Wash, rinse, repeat, over and over. The actual words describing this are found in Judges 2, 16 to 19, so let me read them for you, Judges 2, 16 to 19. It says, Then the Lord raised up judges, that is, after opposition had arisen for Israel, who saved them out of the hands of these raiders. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. They quickly turned from the ways of their ancestors, who had been obedient to the Lord's commands. Whoever the Lord raised up as a judge saved them. He was with the judge and saved them out of the hand of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods and serving and worshipping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. For not to say, therefore, the Lord was angry with Israel. And God used other nations to try and bring them back to him over and over and over. Wash, rinse, repeat. So as you can hear, normal was not their friend. Their commitment to God was generated by desperation. It was at its best when they knew they needed God. And not in some general, cultural, Christian kind of way, but with a legitimate, heart-wrenching, buzzing in the soul kind of distress. Let's turn down this road a little bit further, looking at some more biblical history. Let's glance at the beginning of the story of the prophet Daniel. In 605 BC, the superpowers of Babylon, Egypt, and Syria are in a war to become the preeminent power, and Judah is geographically stuck in the middle of them. Judah has aligned themselves with Egypt, thinking that that would keep them safe. But not long afterwards, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon won a huge, decisive battle over Egypt at a place called Carchemish and left the borders of Palestine wide open. Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon drives through that open door and shows up at the gates of Jerusalem in a story that's told to us in Second Chronicles. Babylon walks in, they set up a puppet king, and they begin a series of deportations that we hear about in the book of Daniel, which is how Daniel himself ended up in Babylon. It's really difficult for us to understand the heartache expressed in the second verse of the first chapter of Daniel, where it says, The Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Did you catch that? The Lord delivered Judah to Nebuchadnezzar. 
is not just the collapse of the country, but the defeat of hope. God's people had turned away from him. They had begun to live their normal, comfortable, and frankly, idolatrous lives. The north, Israel, had already been crushed by Assyria, and they had been carried away and some of them deported. But God was not going to just leave Judah in their status quo conditions, and so Babylon was used by God to achieve change. And these stories and these warnings are abundant in the Old Testament. We could talk about them all day. These all move back to the promises of God for his first call to Abraham in Genesis 12 and to the not yet formed nation of Israel. Abraham was promised that through him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That was reiterated again in the blessings and curses given to Moses in Deuteronomy 28. You may remember it. If they're obedient, God will bless. If they're disobedient, they're going to be in trouble. But however else we may see it, God never calls his people to normal. Because the trouble with normal is it always gets worse. And God has always done what he needs to do to ensure that it doesn't stay that way. So, some of you are thinking, sure, I get that, but that's the Old Testament. That doesn't really apply to the New Testament church. So I'm pleased to be able to answer clearly. It completely applies. It totally applies. There is almost nothing about our call to Christ or the church in the New Testament that would be considered normal. Let's start with this. We preach Christ crucified, the Son of God, born to die in our place for our sin, raised from dead on the third day, ascended to heaven to prepare a place for us where he might be glorified for eternity. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught us to be countercultural in most everything we do, to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, the city on the hill that cannot be hidden. He told us to count the cost, that whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but those who lose their life for his sake will find it. He taught us that everything could be summed up in loving the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. He gave a living demonstration of what that love looked like by washing the feet of his disciples that he knew was going to betray him and then telling us to go in love in the same way. There's not much room for normal in any of that. There's not much leeway for being comfortable in that. We could also review some of the teaching of the Apostle Paul. There would be a lot on this particular topic. For example, he told us in Romans 12 to not conform to the pattern of this world, that is, world normalcy, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He reiterate, reiterates this in Corinthians 15, where the central message, he said, had to be the gospel that he preached, which they received, upon which they had taken their stand. Nothing else could replace it. We can look at the book of Acts and see how God used worldwide persecution to scatter the church in order to spread the gospel. We can burrow into John's letter to the churches, sharing the revelation he received, reminding us over and over that hard things happen as the church fulfills its Christ-given mission in the world. So we need to keep our eyes on the throne room of heaven rather than the events of earth. I can pursue this topic a long time. My bottom line point is simply this. Why do we hear so many Christian people asking for a return to normal post-pandemic? Normal has rarely been the friend of the church. And the trouble with normal is it always gets worse. That is likely true for many of you. I've spent a lot of time asking what God is saying to us through the duration of COVID. You guys... Because if there's one thing I feel certain about, it's that God is, in fact, speaking. Whether it was in the time of Judges or Daniel or the diaspora of the early church, none of this happened outside of his control. So still, today, we do not have worldwide events encircling our planet that affects everybody on the planet without God speaking. The real question is whether or not we're listening. So while I make no pretense or claim of being a prophet, I do have the privilege of interacting with a broad swath of churches within Fellowship Pacific, as well as with other denominational groups. 
So let me suggest that the pandemic, as it begins to wane, requires us to do a lot more than return to normal. The pandemic is not a stand-alone event. But in North America, it has coincided with great civil unrest, with revealed bigotry and racism, with gigantic cracks in the fabric of assumptions of truth, with demonstrable crumbling of the principles of democracy and limits to what we would consider freedom. And throughout all of this, the conservative church has not come through unscathed, nor should it, because God has been speaking. At the risk of overgeneralizing or creating a character of truth, let me suggest some things that have been revealed in the last year about far too large a segment of comfortable, normal North American Christianity. Normal has become protecting our rights at the cost of our gospel mission. Normal has been sacrificing a demand for truth at the altar of expediency and then arguing what that's the right thing to do. Normal has been equating our love for and obedience to Jesus with our political affiliation and then judging others on the basis of that. Normal has been justifying or tacitly accepting our systemic racism if it protects our sense of religious privilege. Normal has been defining discipleship at maintaining and running programs rather than a spirit-led relationship with Jesus. Normal has been minimizing wholehearted worship to nothing more than a Sunday service. Normal has relegated evangelism to reciting memorized lines or reposting online sermons rather than loving, engaging, and sharing Jesus with our neighbors. It's become believing that it's the role of a secular government to reinforce why church is essential, rather than asking ourselves why our lives, our words, do not demonstrate or shout the gospel sufficiently, regardless of the government. Now, perhaps some of you think that's harsh, and it's unfair to say to you. And you're probably right. I think I agree with you. You see, I'm not really talking to you. I started this talking to myself in the past year, trying to listen to what God is saying to me about me and about himself. I'm desperately trying to step out of my own culturally contented cloak long enough to realize that to at least to some degree, I have a mix of all of those issues, all of those things I just mentioned in my own life. I want to suggest to you that normal in our local North American churches is a substantial distance from what Jesus called us to, and perhaps it has been for a long, long time. And I simply, this morning, want to invite you into that conversation. Conversation between you and God. Because maybe God has something to say to you, just as he had something to say to me. So look. I know that when I throw around the term normal, in that way you hear it like a swear word, and some of you are smart enough to realize that it's really kind of unfair. And in some senses it is, because we have many great churches, we have awesome Christ-following leaders that I value and appreciate. And we do, we do want and need to obediently regather as the church post-COVID, and it will be exciting when we do it. We know that corporate worship, including singing, sermons, and a community gathering are critical parts of belonging to the body of Christ. We are aware that we do need programs and groups and ministries targeted to various groups, and I do want all those things and more, just the same as most of you. But let's never forget that God has, throughout history, insisted that the church stay on track and focus on the right things. That we refuse the idolatry of our pride, the intoxication of power, the sole poverty of our wealth, and the comfort of our perceived safety and programs, and that we give our allegiance to him alone as Lord, and then we live it out. God is calling us to something greater than normal. He is calling us to something extraordinary for his glory and kingdom. COVID has been very hard and tragic for many people. 
we all pray, at least I hope we are, that we are in this final stretch of sickness and restrictions. And if you're one of those who has paid a heavy price, please know that as Fellowship Pacific, we love you, we stand with you, we pray with you. But we do need to understand that God does not allow these things lightly. There is a purpose. And God did, in fact, allow this. God is yearning for us to listen carefully and to come back from the pandemic different than we went in. To be thoughtful, with aching hearts, that we would be the church that he gave his son to create. Remembering over and over that the trouble with normal is always gets worse. As we return to the church post-COVID, let's ask for, demand for, something a whole lot more. There's a second song by Bruce Coburn that's been echoing through the somewhat empty chambers of my mind throughout the year of COVID. And it's titled Waiting for a Miracle. Some of you maybe, probably not, have heard it. The refrain of it goes like this. He says, you rub your palm on the grimy, grimy pain in the hope that you can see. You stand up proud. You pretend you're strong in the hope that you can be like the ones who cried like the ones who die while they're waiting for a miracle. I'm praying for a miracle. First and foremost, that I would hear clearly what God has been saying and that I would have the courage to change. And second, second miracle, is that maybe it wouldn't just be me that thinks we need that miracle. Please join me in a future that is far more than normal. Thanks for spending this time together. That's quite the challenge, isn't it? Right? It's it's very easy for us to desire to go back to normal. I know that's me. I want to get back to normal. I want to be done with the masks. I just want to go back to how... It used to be, and yet, how it used to be maybe wasn't as great as we thought it was. And uh, a little bit of the biblical history lesson that David gave, I mean, that's true throughout history. If you look at the history of the church, of when did the church see a resurgence? When did more and more people put their faith and their trust in Jesus? It wasn't during the easy good times. It was always during the hardest times. Times of persecution, times of suffering, of war, of all kinds of things like that. And so it's very tempting for us to just want to get back to how things used to be. But as David said, we need to ask ourselves, God, what are you saying through all of this? What are you saying to us as a culture, as a church? What are you saying to me as an individual? Because as hard as it is for us to fully understand it, our God, who is a God of love, is behind everything. He allowed this pandemic to happen. He allowed the suffering. He allowed the fear. He allowed the struggle. Why? I think ultimately because He wants to remind us that we need Him. Without Him, we're nothing. And so we need to get back to that place of being dependent on our Heavenly Father of, God, what do you actually want for us? Not just going through the motions, coming to church on a Sunday morning, maybe being part of a small group, those kinds of things, which, again, as David said, they're all good things. But what does it actually mean to be a follower of Jesus? What does it, what does it actually look like for us to share Jesus with other people? I'm just going to leave that with you because it's not an easy question. And I think it's going to look different for each and every one of us. But as we go into this week, even as we're frustrated with the fact that we have to wear masks again, ask yourself, God, what are you saying to me? I don't want to go back to normal. Maybe that should be your prayer. God, help me not to want to go back to normal. Help me to want what it is that you want in my life.
I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to close with one more song, and then we have a few quick announcements after that before we wrap up. Would you please stand? Uh, just a couple quick uh, things to let you know about. Uh, really not much actually to let you know about. Things are pretty quiet around here during the summer. However, uh, I will just mention one thing to put on your calendar. September 12th, uh, Sunday, uh, the Sunday after the Labor Day long weekend, we're going to be having our fall kickoff. And so let me just uh, encourage you to come on out, be a part of that. Uh, we're still in the middle of plans and everything, but we're hoping to do a barbecue lunch after. And it's just going to be a great time. There will probably be some activities for the kids and those kinds of things. So, uh, yeah, great time to come on out and invite friends, those kinds of things. If you do want to know more about what's going on, please, you can always head over to our website, westsidefellowship.ca, and uh, you can find all the information there, as well as if you want to watch past messages, things like that. It's all right there for you in one place. 
Uh, before we do wrap up, I just do want to say uh, a continued thank you. Uh, I know many of you, as you've been on holidays and away or, uh, you know, still tentatively coming back after COVID, and I mean, who knows what's going on with COVID right now, uh, but let me just thank you for your continued generosity. Uh, our church is solely funded by the support of, of people like you uh, and uh, your gifts and donations, and so uh, let me just say thank you. Uh, but I also want to remind you that that's actually something that God calls us to. And we ask people to give. If you're a part of this church, we ask you to give not because we just want your money, but it's because that's actually what God wants for us. And he tells us in his word, the Bible, that when we give, we are actually the ones who are blessed. Um, in, in Paul's letter... Our second letter to the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians 9, he writes, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And so God calls us to give not because He needs what we have. Everything we have is from Him. He owns everything. The entire universe is His. But He gives it to us because He wants to see if we're going to be faithful, if we're going to trust Him, if we're going to be like Him and be generous. And He promises when we are generous, He will be generous towards us might not always see it in just money and possessions and things like that. Uh, God, In fact, God often promises, as David said, and as we've been seeing, there will be pain, there will be suffering, there will be hardship. But sometimes those blessings are not necessarily wealth, but relationships, connections with other people, seeing God's kingdom grow. And that's what we're all about as a church. And so if you want to join us by... Uh, giving towards our, our church and what we're doing here. There's many ways that you can uh, see on the screen there to give. Uh, for those of you here in person, there's also a donation box out in the lobby as well. Well, I think that that is everything that we have this morning. So again, thank you so much for joining with us. I know it was a little bit of a different morning for those of you here in person. Uh, hopefully next Sunday, I think we'll be a little bit more back to normal, uh, although I'm guessing we'll still have to wear the masks. So uh, again... God bless. Have yourselves a great week, and we will see you next Sunday.